Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode, who knows, this is a pre-recorded episode. Um, Going to have some, uh, a lot of these coming up over the summer, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, I know of several episodes back I um, mentioned on a pre-record that, uh, you know, since I'm, right now I'm the only one that's able to do the broadcasting, uh, we're going to do some pre-records, that way it will work in some time that I can be able to take away. Uh, from doing the broadcasts, uh, but still get a good podcast out for everybody to listen to and watch each week. Uh, Well, you're not missing out on your TFYLP fix, uh, because I know a lot of people depend on us each week, and uh, we thank each and every one of you. Uh, It's uh, it's because of you that we're still around. Um, Tonight with me is Christian Russell. Hello. And Rick Alvarez. You know, if you're doing a lot of things that society suggests are right, but you still feel like something is wrong, that's probably a sign that you're off purpose. So when you're living on purpose, you're entirely fulfilled because you're living a life engulfed in personal meaning. And that's why I collect toys. Hmm. I need. I feel like I need to be sitting on a mat right now with my fingers like this, uh, outspread with my uh, my legs crossed and just going. Mm. Yeah. Who said that, Gandhi? I did just now. Oh. Wow, that's pretty deep, man. Yeah, I like, <laughs> it, I like it deep. Like it deep. Deep and hard. <laughs> See, we can't go five minutes without a sex or dick joke. <laughs> Welcome to TFYLP for we your pleasure. We haven't the topic yet we're doing this. No, we haven't. <laughs> well, if you're watching the YouTube video, you already know what the topic is because it's right up there at the top of the screen. You're right. Yeah, cheaters. Cheaters, cheaters. You haven't told me what the topic is yet. I don't know. Yeah, you do. This might as well be TFYLP Mystery Box. Interesting topic idea. Mm. Hmm. Didn't we kind of do that last time? I yeah, think you guys did. Yeah, but we didn't call it Mystery Box. It was uh, Luck of the Draw. I thought that was a more appropriate oh, that, that, name. Yeah, that's more on theme. I like it. Which actually, it. Uh, that kind of gives you an idea of when we recorded this. Uh, but, you know, it got a really, really good response. And uh, um, so we're going to be doing those from time to time. Maybe once every month or every other month, probably. Uh, don't want to run it into the ground, but had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I know we did. Uh, the listeners that watched in live, uh, they had a lot of fun doing it. So... Uh, you know, that's something we'll, we'll have come back around. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, kind of keeps you on your toes. You know, you don't know what's coming and, and you got to think of something and you're like, or think of something that you hadn't really considered, uh, you know, like, you know, whose voice actor would you, or who would you like to see come into Transformers as a voice actor? You know, Chris or, or Chris, Rick, uh, totally Threw, uh, threw everybody off with his Christopher Walken for uh, uh, who was it Alpha Trion? <laughs> Alpha Trion, yeah, yeah, that Ooh, was I like that. That was pretty epic. He he did a pretty pretty mean uh, Christopher Walken too, and a lot of people yeah. was liking that. Yeah, I'm pretty amazing <laughs> in ever, in everything I do. Yeah, except in sex, you're pretty disappointing in that, aren't you? Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm according to your to your mom. So. Oh. My mom has a mancha, dude. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> tonight we'll be talking about Transformers Animated. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, there's something that I did pick up recently. So it's a little bit of an ouch my wallet. Uh, probably by the time this became, uh, or this actually is, is uh, broadcast, um, it will be old hat, but at the same time, it's new to me right now, and I'd like to talk about it for a moment. Um, this guy right here. Uh, a lot Yay. of people are looking for it. And uh, this is uh, the movie uh, movie studio series Leader Blackout. And I would have to give this toy a solid B-minus. 
Uh, it it accomplishes a lot of things. It's yeah, it's it's good, but for the price, I've gotten better. Uh, and it's I'll, I'll, so close. It's close. It is close. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll I'll get into to what I've gotten better for the price here in a moment. Uh, I I like the looks of it. Here I have it in uh, in helicopter mode. Um, he he looks pretty nice. Although this kind of looks funny the way the the tail is a little it kind of goes flat uh, right there. Uh, one of my biggest beeps, uh, beefs about the vehicle mode is uh, the underside, pretty much hollow city there. Of course, I'm calling that an homage to the 07 toy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, of course, you got the Scorponok there. Uh, you know, the little little place where the Scorponok comes out, and if I can pull Which him I out, love. yeah, the uh, it's it's really nice. It doesn't really transform; just the tail opens up, and you know, you got your little thing there. Uh, but the only thing I don't like is that uh, this right here, uh, the the pincher comes off like super easy. I've literally dropped this and spent 20 minutes looking for it because uh, I don't want, no, didn't know where I dropped it. And luckily I found it. But yeah, it does not stay on all that well. Um, and that's right straight out of the box. Um, a couple other things that I don't like about it. Um, uh, some of the tolerances are like borderline horrible. I'll show that here in a moment as soon as I get Scorponok back in his little cubby. Well, let's see. The pincher came off. I'll screw that. I'll just put this back over here. Um, but if I can hold it up to the camera here, these side panels uh, that, that flip out here, I don't know if you can see it, which side is it? It's this side here. Uh, there's already a tiny stress mark right there. And that was after the very first time I transformed it. Um, and be it's because these tabs that hold it on there, in order to get to them, uh, these, uh, these things, these intakes here are kind of in the way. Even if you kind of rotate them out, uh, it's kind of difficult to untab there. So you have to uh, pull on it and it stresses the plastic. It bends the plastic a little bit. Uh, it's got really, really cheap plastic. It's It doesn't feel very sturdy. It's light. Very lightweight. Um, the detail on this uh, this thing is, is rather nice. Uh, you know, it's got the good, you know, clear windows. But if you look close enough, you can see his robot head kind of peering out the the windshield <laughs> um I see where he's going yeah yeah uh <laughs> another thing i don't like are uh the uh, the rotors you got to be super careful with how they uh deploy because you know how they fold up on his back well uh they have to be spread out in a specific way and if you don't remember how you could uh, easily tug on one a little too uh, i have not done that this yet but if you tug on it a little too hard uh, it will break off um uh, because i can already see stress on one of them because it was just not not pulling the way it, uh, it uh, needed to uh the way the uh the, uh, the pontoons here on the side the way they clip in is not exactly uh, up to snuff, in my opinion. Uh, there, there, there's just a few other th uh, things that I don't really like about it. Mainly the hollowness and some of the tolerances and the cheapness feel of it. Uh, for fifty bucks, roughly. I mean, I get I got this at Target, and for oh, another thing too. Uh, this this thing here will not. It, stay together. it doesn't line up. No, it will not stay together. I don't. Uh, you know, that's as good as I could get it, and that's a little, little piece above the uh, cockpit. I've heard of many people say, well, "You just got to press down on the cockpit," and I've tried everything. I've tried, you know, flexing it a little bit, and, and it just, and everything I say just sounds dirty. I know, uh, but um, it, it just won't stay together. Um, 
and of course some of these panels they won't line up it's it's another one of those transformers where uh you get one panel lined up and tabbed in and the opposite side comes unpegged that's kind of annoying um but all in all it is a decent looking figure uh both in robot mode and uh in helicopter mode it it's a good passable uh, it's probably the best, well, it's not probably, it is the best representation of Blackout we've ever gotten. And it's only 10 years too late. Yeah, yeah. If uh, if we had gotten this toy back in the day, which I understand why we didn't, because of the lead time and, and everything, I understand. But if we'd gotten these toy, the, uh, a toy like this back in the day, whenever the movies were first out, I... I think a lot more people would have been warmed up to the uh, to the movie lines, even even if the movies had crappy storylines. Because if you had some really good toys like this, uh, and and despite my misgivings about this toy, I do consider it a really good toy. I don't regret it. Um, but I think it would have uh, the movie movie lines would have probably did a little bit better, especially later on. Um, but. As I said earlier, for 50 bucks, you could either get this or you could get Zeta Toys uh, Whirlblade, which is their Vortex. Roughly the same size or similar comparable size in helicopter mode. Uh, there is no underside hollowness on it at all. It is, it, it is completely self-contained. It is a chunky robot, but so is Blackout. Um and and his price point is roughly 55 to 60 bucks. So once again, Hasbro puts out a product that a third party puts out a better product there, for the I'll same price. It's a, fair, it's a fair comparison. Why is it not? Well, one is supposed to represent one character, the other represents a completely different character. However, they have the uh, pretty much same alt mode. It's a uh, Sea King I believe is what the, oh, what this is. Uh, stallion. Is it a stallion? Yeah, but when one transforms... Well, Blackout's what? a paid low. Grindor's a, st a sea stallion. Yeah, but it's just not a fair uh, comparison because one, the aesthetic is so different on both of them. Not entirely. I, I mean... One, I, one is G1 animation. The other one is live action movie. But you look they're, at they're their all... Farther, what, no, what I'm comparing is like their alt modes. Their alt modes are very, very, very similar. Right, so, so for, why for only five more dollars can they put so much more plastic into that blade than they that, do on Blackout? That's the point that I'm trying to make. But that's, uh, that's the wrong point of view because there's actually more parts on the Hasbro version than on the Zeta Toys version. The parts count is exponentially different, which means the tooling dollars are much higher on the Hasbro version than on the Zeta Toys version. I'm not entirely sure that's true because because uh, the way the the, the Zeta... Oh, oh, oh you, you're saying I'm wrong. No, I'm talking about the Zeta Toys version because... I have the Zeta Toys version. There's a lot of panels on it. Yeah, that's great. But you look at all the little pieces and little nooks and crannies, all the little nuances that go into the robot mode of that blackout, there's a lot more tooling a lot more gates that are needed, a lot more metal that needs to be cut when compared to the Zeta Toys one. Just saying. Mm. You know, one one might cost, you know, Zeta Toys might, that might cost $55,000 to tool. The Hasbro version, that Hasbro Blackout, that was north of a hundred grand. Easy. Plus they still have to pay licensing to Sikorsky. And they got to give Michael Bay his cash and Spielberg yep. his cash. Yep. Hasbro makes very little money off movie hmm. toys. Hadn't really thought about it that way. Hmm. So I suppose when, when you're at the end consumer level like we are, it's it's easy to try and say, you know, 50 bucks versus 50 bucks. Yeah. But maybe well, it's I mean, not that simple. If, if you're buying it based on the alt mode. Personally, is your, your money. Uh, Whirl, Whirlblade is your money. But wow. if I... it, that, in my opinion, as an end consumer, I have to say that. Uh, but if you're basing it on character, uh, it's not a blackout is not a bad buy. Uh, it has issues. 
I wish that, and, and, and again, you know, the quality is just not what it should be, in my opinion. But, you know, I'd still buy a grind door or an evac. Probably not world. You know, the thing is, is, is there a whole lot of difference between blackout and grind door as far as, in I the, mean. In the real world, grind door should be a lot bigger because sea stallions are bigger than pave lows. But as far as, like, model goes, no. They pretty much use the same model. Yeah. Because I remember whenever I first saw him in the theater uh, as Grindor, I thought I thought Blackout died. And, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody's like, no, that's Grindor. And I'm like, oh, okay. And the difference is <laughs> name. I like his color scheme on the Revenge of the Fallen toy, though. That nice kind of gray with the yellow and black highlights. I like it a lot. Hmm. I'd, buy it. I'd buy it in the studio series. Maybe maybe we'll get one based maybe. on the same, uh, same tooling or something. I don't know. But that being said, uh, I, I still give Blackout a solid B-. minus. It's not the greatest toy in the world, um, but I can see why he is getting a lot of hype. I don't like the, the, the platform feat, but that's that's forgivable given the transformation. Um. He's he's really nice. He's really nice. He's got lots and lots of molded in detail. Uh, the head is like dead on. Uh, oh, for sure. So yeah, I mean he's he he's he's a good toy. Um, I, I'm surprised he's he's as hard to find around the country because I mean literally I didn't look all that hard for him and I found him. Um, but I, I understand distribution can be kind of a bitch sometimes. So. Uh, you know, one area can get him, and then an area 50 miles away can't. But, as such. So, what do you guys got? Anything new recently? Well, I got a, you know, it's not an ouch my wallet, but I got this guy. This is the Evergreen Shockwave. Oh. And is he I, worth it? I would say for the 20 bucks that he is at Walgreens, this is the perfect size shockwave for your generations shelf. I love generations. And this is the perfect size shockwave for that shelf. Now the transformation is, the articulation is extremely lacking, but the visuals, the colors are all there. Highly recommend it. Just stand them up next to your Megatron. And then I got a, yeah, this didn't really hurt my wallet too bad. I got a, a jump seal, starter. Uh, I got a sealed uh, Topsman. Yeah. What, what does that set, set you back? About 50 bucks? <laughs> uh, it was a little bit north of that, but I think it goes well with this. So. Oh, you know. the original box so, art. And I don't know. Maybe. So, So you know. Just so, throw it on the pile. Uh, somebody was saying that, uh, I, was, I was listening, uh, well, uh, I was talking to St. Galvatron about it here recently but i also saw uh, people talking about it on uh, one of the facebook groups that the evergreen shockwave the way the knee uh, the the knee area is uh, there's no knee well that's what i'm saying there uh, there's like a mushroom peg or something down there yeah. that where a third party could do like a mushroom peg uh adapter kit to actually give him knees yep you i'm could. waiting for someone to 3d print them on shapeways for me yeah you could but then i'm worried he might be a little too tall like his legs might be a little too long, but I think maybe if you replace the hip as well, but there is a pin in there. So yeah. 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 Let me know how it turns out. Christian. I want to. Yeah. I forget see. who I found that was doing it. Uh, someone said they were working on it and would print up a couple sets for people if they wanted them. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'll, find it. I'll be sure to let you guys know. Uh, is that the the biggest problem with that toy is uh, uh, the knees, the lack of knees? Complete, complete lack of articulation. But I mean, you know, if you're comparing it to the G1 Shockwave, he's, he's about the same. A, about the same yep. articulation. I don't know. The G1 Shockwave had some articulation for a G1 toy. It had knees. It had uh, hips. I mean, it didn't have swivels a whole lot, uh, but it had a lot of arm articulation. The head could turn was on on a swivel um well I mean, it, it, it had a shocking amount for a g1 i guess is what i'm trying to say yeah compared to the other g1 figures yeah 
It was not a broadside. <laughs> hmm. I was just really surprised that that the Authentics or Evergreen Shockwave looks the part as much as he does. Like, if they were able to make something look like that much Shockwave, why haven't we got an actual Classics one by now? Kind of weird. Because he turns into a blaster. That's why uh, he has is to that turn into... that what it into, is now? Yeah, that's why he has to turn into some weird, like, flying... What does he turn hard... into? Like a... He turns into, like, a weird flying uh, USB stick or something. <laughs> that's a good description. Hard. Yeah. A flying yeah, USB kinda, stick. Just kind of want to plug him into the side of your computer and, you know, put all your porn on him. I, you know, I've got one of those little, uh, uh, it's a knockoff, uh, uh, Ravage, the USB stick. It's pronounced Ravage. The Ravage, yes. <laughs> uh, and what I did is I stuck the entire first season of G1 on it. I thought that was pretty appropriate. Nice. Um, I am guessing that I probably shouldn't have done that because I've heard a lot of people say that the the knockoffs had viruses uh, that was installed on the uh, on the on the USBs, but I haven't. Well, I, mean, I, I did it literally years ago, so I haven't had any ill effects since. So I'm assuming yeah. that. I mean, we are trying to raise money for you to buy a new computer, but I'm sure the two are completely unrelated. <laughs> well, that was like. I literally bought this thing like five or six years. I've ago. lost interest. You have never, you never had interest, man. If we're not talking about me, you're right. I'm, I kind of just zone out a little bit. <laughs> Eyes just roll back in the head. <laughs> so animated. Uh, let's get on to our main topic of discussion tonight. Um, Transformers animated. I know it's a topic that we've we've touched on from time to time, but you know we like to go back and look at different eras of Transformers uh, and talk about them because sometimes whenever we talk about them, we may uh, uh, either skim over uh, a particular aspect of that uh, that uh, that series, or we may completely forget about something. And and you know, covering it again gives us another opportunity uh, to. Uh, to look at it from a fresh perspective, uh, fresh uh, ideas about it. I think it's been at least a year or two, maybe even three, since we've uh, covered a good animated topic. Um, I'm wanting to say it's at least a year, but um, even so, uh, Transformers Animated uh, was very, very popular, uh, it met, even though... Uh, originally it met with mixed reviews. I know whenever I first saw it, I, the toys, I wasn't entirely sold on them because they looked very, I want to say kitty, but that sounds like a derogatory term. Oh, did you say kitty or kitty? Not, not kitty, kitty yeah. as in play schoolish. Um, you know, that's, I zoned out again there. Continue. We're, we're talking about G1. Um, but the, the, the TV show really sold, uh, sold me on, on the toys. I wound up collecting them. Uh, I had a good amount of the, of the show, uh, the characters that actually appeared in the show. Um, I didn't have them all, but I had a good amount of them. But I eventually wound up selling them all. Simply for the reason, in my opinion, they did not fit. They didn't look right on the shelf next to my other Transformers. They just, uh, even they, though... They weren't supposed to. I, I know, but as a collector, as an adult collector, I ha even if I put them on another shelf, totally on another shelf without, you know, that's, that doesn't have any other Transformer on them, I found that I did not like the fact that they just didn't look like they were supposed to be Transformers. Uh, given the fact that they are very, very good representations of the animated characters, uh, and they are good toys, I'm not knocking the toys at all when it comes to that. But 
what I'm saying is that I didn't care for how they looked on my shelf. Now, some people, I, under, I get that they don't have the same uh, uh, disposition about them, but I I don't know. It just it was hard for me to stay warm on them after oh. the after the glow of the show uh, went off the air. It just they just kind of I lost interest in them. Do you miss them now that you don't have them, or have you gotten any back in the intervening years? They are one. Of, that is the one line I have not went back and picked up a single toy from because I missed it. That being said, there are several molds that I did enjoy. I did. Uh, I, I actually enjoyed the Bumblebee mold. I did too. Um, the Retgar mold I liked. Uh, the Jetfire and Jetstorm. The uh, use the symmetrical docking like the uh, uh, the Brave toys. Um, I, I really, I really dig that. That was actually one. What's that? I worked on that one. What that one right there? The what is that? Iron fi- or that's the this is uh, Ratchet's mold, but this is Auto Trooper. Oh yeah, Auto Trooper. That's from uh, Bakan. That was actually one that I didn't care for, <laughs> but oh, I did like. This has turned into one of my favorite molds. I did like the hot rod. The hot rod was if I if I were to go back. And, and pick up an animated toy, it would be animated Hot Rod. Because I really, really liked it. It was it it, it looked good. It had a fun little quick transformation. Um, it, was, it was a good toy. Hot Rod's uh, a fun guy. Well, let me ask you this. Once Beast Wars is over, does that glow go away and you get rid of your Beast Wars toys too? don't have any beast for well, i've got one but it's autographed to me so it's a little hard to sell um so you know once the movies are over is it is the glow gone i mean that's, I th- is that the argument you're making no but it is for animated simply for the fact that animated i like the show i enjoyed the show and I have one season of it on DVD. I was not able to pick up the entire series on DVD. Um, but it's one of those shows that I don't find myself itching to go back and watch. Hmm. I, and I don't know why. You I know, don't uh, know why. I've recently, we have a TV in the car, and I, I play lots of movies, shows for the girls. And uh, we've we've gone through recent, very recently. We went through all of animated, and they loved it. And even though I can't watch the show while I'm driving, I'm listening to it. And what a what a perfect reinvention of the brand that was. And as I've been agree. photographing stuff for uh, for my next project, you know, so there's this instant realization that. There was no wasted opportunity with animated. Every single toy that was made was a character from the show. Now, there were characters on the show that weren't made into toys, like the Constructicons. Omega. Omega Supreme. uh, Cyclonus, Stryka, Hotshot. The the you know some some of the sneakers were some weren't, um, but you know excluding some repaints, every and some of the repaints even made it onto the show. You know in season four, Ratchet was going to go into the Target exclusive green color, uh, Shockwave when he turned purple. That was a that was an exclusive exclusive repaint. Uh, so you were going to have. Uh, even even some of those repaints, those tertiary repaints, are going to show up. There, there's never been a line like that, and for that alone, I appreciate it and value it so much more than some of the other lines we have, because it was so th- thought out. There was so, there was so much care and planning put into that toy line, that there wasn't like you have the movie where you have fifty toys. 25 of them are Optimus and Bumblebee. Five of them are the other characters. And then you got these no-named 
characters that are it's a motorcycle it's a bird it's a whatever that don't show up in the movie don't show up in the comics they're hey let's just call it night beat just because and we'll make him blow and his head's yellow it has nothing to do with night beat and looks nothing like night beat and it's just a toy for the sake of there being a toy and i i always look at stuff like that as a wasted opportunity a wasted opportunity and there were no wasted opportunities in the animated toy line if they could, that, wasn't there it doesn't didn't Derek J Wyatt do like a whole book that had like a bunch of characters that he did designs for but never actually appeared in the show like animated uh, versions of characters false park almanac kind of does that yeah yeah so the almanac kind of kind of touches on that there's there's a couple characters in there and uh, you know, there were some toys for animated, which never came out, and some which only came out in Japan. Blackout. But <laughs> yeah, Blackout, the the Wingblade Optimus, the Hydra Dive Bumblebee, uh, and then there was the uh, the Hot Shot, never got released, never got tooled up. The uh, Season Four Megatron, never got tooled up. What a cool name for it, too. Marauder Megatron. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and he had that because he was in jail. Mm-hmm. He had that the, the mask. With, with the little Hannibal Lecter faceplate from Beast Machines over yeah, his head. Yeah, it was great. How, how incredibly uh, uh, thought out everything was. And uh, there, there were really no wasted opportunities. And uh, there, there's only two third-party animated figures so far. Uh, they came out years ago. It was the uh, Pipes and, um, yep, Hoffer. And they're great. They're great. They fit in perfectly. Now, I completely wish that the Constructicons would come out uh, slipstream, but and Omega, of course, but we'll, I don't know if we'll ever get them, unfortunately. My heart yearns yearns for those toys. Do you think a third party will ever go back and start doing more animated toys? Every, everything is masterpiece, man. Everything is masterpiece. Unfortunately, I don't know. It like Fans trying. Project is doing some, uh, has been doing a lot of like War for Cybertron and. Yeah, but everything. you know, if you it's you look at them and it's you got to squint. The Planet X stuff, okay, that's generations, but the other War for Cybertron stuff that we've gotten, that's definitely masterpiece scale. And you look at the mass toys that that brand new seeker they're doing, uh, that new Optimus Prime. Everything's masterpiece scale now, and it's it's cool to have them in that sc- in that scale with that articulation and those transformation abilities. But again, we're we're killing the market. Do you think there ever could be a masterpiece animated? Oh, absolutely. I, abs- I think we'll get a masterpiece everything eventually. It's I mean, we, look, we have uh, as- animated Optimus Primal, Cheetor, Dinobot. It's only a matter of time before we get a masterpiece Armada, a masterpiece... Uh, you know, who else were the other heavy hitters? Uh, Superlink Convoy... To- uh, I'm trying to think about G1, you know, maybe Chrome Dome, yeah. uh, Cup Blur. I think it's only a matter of time. Hmm. Yeah, probably. It took us 20 years to go from G1 to MP01, and then 20 years to go from Optimus Primal to MP Primal, so maybe. We're yeah. only at 10 years for animated right now. Yeah, that, that's scary. That is scary. <laughs> I can remember scary. BotCon 07, uh, what was it, in Cincinnati? Uh, and so, 08 in Cincinnati. Or was it 08? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, a, lot of the toy, a lot of the stores in the Cincinnati area uh, was flooded with animated toys. I remember... Uh, that was the test market. Yeah, we, we, dro- we drove up from the Lexington area, and we started hitting, I believe, around... <laughs> Around Florence, I think, is where, where we started stopping at stores. And, yeah, you go in and there's, like, animated everywhere. And you're like, holy crap. I, I, yep. uh, I remember picking up, like, Bumblebee and I think 
uh, I think it was Ratchet and maybe Starscream and Optimus Prime, the deluxe Optimus Prime. Uh, you, like that first first day. Yep, you I know, got I, Trial and Black Rackney while I was there. I got a lockdown. He broke two seconds out of the package. That yeah, because fits. of the hands. Yeah, the risky right. Thing. And then, and then, like I gave Archer the heads up. This was before I worked for Hasbro. I gave him the heads up. I'm like, hey, listen, man. At 10 o'clock tomorrow, everyone would have broken lockdowns coming to the Hasbro booth. So you know, don't be there. <laughs> and was it accurate? I don't know. I wasn't there. I, I, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I, I didn't know if he ever said, hey, you remember that thing you told me about the animated lockdown? Which, you know, that was actually a really good uh, toy. Uh, I enjoyed, too, lockdown. Um, and I, I tell you, another one that I enjoyed the design of, oil slick. I love that head in a bubble. That just looked yeah. so cool. Oil yeah. slick was pretty neat. So uh, that Unrustable Bastards motorcycle, I sent that to my buddy Saul, and he's making it into oil slick. That, that I've, I've been very tempted to do uh, get a white one just to paint up like oil slick, yeah. That would be pretty badass. Hmm. Ideas. There's an interesting thing about animated that just talking about it with you guys now has kind of made me think. Even though it got cut short, it was supposed to go on to another season and there was supposed to be another wave or two of toys. I, it, it's kind of weird that we haven't gotten anything afterwards other than Bacon stuff. But I kind of think it's because animated feels complete and all by itself. I, I think that goes with what Rick was saying. About it is a very compartmentalized. No wasted opportunities. Yeah. yeah. It, just, it just feels like well, it, it finished, it's all together, <clears throat> and then it, it's gone. Well, here, here is how people internally looked at animated. Because you look at what came out alongside it, Revenge of the Fallen. So you have two very distinct aesthetics, two very distinct packaging types. Plus and they're the on the second shelf. universe launch, too, at the same time. And, and they're on the shelf next to each other, right? So a kid is looking at kids play up their age. So kids looking at the Revenge of the Fallen stuff, they're looking at the animated stuff. I want to go with that because th that animated stuff, that's for babies. And it, uh, that's, and that, yeah. <laughs> that's what the downfall of animated was. That it was for, it looked younger than yeah. it was. That's what I meant whenever I said it looked kitty. Uh, it just very play schoolish. Uh, if that's, if that's but, a descriptive term. You look, you, you have to look back past that and you got to look at how, well, the toys are made, and well, if just you, how good that show was. If you if you Definitely. get past uh, past the look and buy one of the toys, yeah, if you, you, you buy one of the quick toys, quick that it's not kitty. Yeah, I mean, all you have to do is, is is get one in hand and transform it once, and you're like, this is not a kitty toy. Um, you know, it's not like a like a rescue bot. Uh, th and I did. Does anybody do you know if uh, animated did very well in Japan? I don't I don't think that it did, did it? Uh I don't know, but um they they got three toys that we didn't and we got four toys that they didn't. Our four toys were the Toys R Us exclusives, the RC Ironhide Ratchet from Cybertron and uh who was the fourth guy? Hot Rod yeah, was it hot, hot, rod? hot rod? Yeah. Oh, they got hot rod in Japan though. They they did. He was a you know he was a, a different color. Character. Yeah, um, yeah. So they got that and they did the black hot rod as well. Um, that was a good toy. I recently sold that one, but it was it was nice to have. All had it. And uh, and then of course they got the wing blade, the bumblebee, and the blackout. I had that bumblebee too. He was okay. Blackout was disappointing after how much he'd been hyped up. It wasn't. It, I mean, he looked cool. He wasn't a very good toy, though. What was bad about it? I never actually had one in hand. I've seen it in box, but I've never actually transformed one. Maybe it's because we had the movie Blackout first, but the animated one felt very simple. Even among other animated toys, it just felt not worth it. I mean, I didn't end up paying too much for it, but it was just... It was really simple, really easy, and then it was small, just like you know, Lugnut or even the first movie, Blackout. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot smaller than it should have been. Well, didn't he not come out over here because of, uh, like, a licensing issue? Well, the the line had already come and gone, and uh, I think I think we talked about this at one point. I believe we did on that, the last the last time we that, uh, mentioned animated. Yeah, that uh, you know, studio said it, it's too close to ours. It has to go. You, you have to pay us for it. So that was part of it. And then we, you know, some time had passed, and we had thought, well, let's just put it out with season three. And uh, with the Optimus and the Bumblebee, and it just just never happened. But it came, it saw a light in Japan, but, uh, like I, I, I saw one at, at a bot con. I'm wanting to say, I'm wanting to say it's 2012. I saw one. Um, but I never actually got to, got to transform it. Now that was one of the molds I always wanted to, to try. You, you know what? I have that one and the, the Optimus and Bumblebee and I just haven't opened them. I've, I've left them in their packages just cause. They look good in the boxes, but that blackout, it's its like a lug nut. It's really, really small. It's really small. It's lug really nut small. was good. I liked lug nut. It's he a was... fine toy, but he's mm-hmm. tiny. Yeah. Tiny toy. For such a big box. And I've got the Wingblade Prime. That worked out really well. And I had the Hydra Drive Bumblebee, and it was neat. And I really liked that you could transform them together without having to take them apart. But at the end of the day, it just it didn't feel like a Transformers toy. I don't I don't know how else to describe it. And that was an all new Bumblebee as well. That wasn't yeah. just yeah yeah that, yeah. Was, that part was cool. It was, it was Bumblebee all new like, tool. Yeah, but the the jetpack didn't really feel like it fit in, even among animated stuff. Yeah, and we never got a sorry, which I really would have wanted. We're sorry we uh, didn't get sorry. <laughs> Especially the uh, teenage sorry with the transforming scooter into the jet pack. That there, there was great. a lot of potential there. There was a lot of potential there. So, um, kind of inspired by animated. So the guy, uh, what was his name? Transformers Prime Silas. Yeah. Yes. So Silas, um, I kept fighting this battle ever since the character came up, and I kept losing and losing, and I kept fighting this battle man and nobody understood why like like rick let it go like who cares nobody like i kept saying his last name has to be sumdak silas sumdak just you know it's a completely different universe i just thought it's gonna be so fucking cool that his last name is sumdak and he's into this technology and he's making this nemesis prime guy and it's nobody bought into it just Oh. Why? Maybe, why? Maybe I... Does, why do people have to be negative Nancys and say well, no? Look, it's not going to hurt anything. Just throw it in there. Say, as soon as you say, well, that was from another show, whoever is the current producer or writer says, well, we don't want that because it's from another show. But then don't mention it. So, <laughs> so this is why Bulkhead, Bulkhead almost wasn't in the show. So it was originally Ironhide. Ironhide was in the show and we were starting to design Ironhide and some of the concepts for Ironhide were shown. Um, uh, Ken Christensen, he's shown his Ironhide. So Hasbro senior management, like way beyond our levels had decided, well, Ironhide's going to die in movie three. So we can't put him in the show. It's going to confuse kids, but it's a completely different show. It has nothing to do with the movie. It's not a movie based show. It's going to confuse kids because he dies in the movie. All right. So at the last second, we take out Ironhide and we, we say, hey, Bulkhead's a great character. Let's go with Bulkhead. So, you know, some time goes by. We design Bulkhead. We're, we're, we're getting to his final form. And, and then we get this communication from the studio. Is Bulkhead a character from a different show? He was introduced in a different show, but he's a char- he is a Transformers character, and that's what you need to understand. Well, we don't want to use Bulkhead because he's from another show. That's not how it works. He is a Transformers character. And really, bottom line, because we were so far behind, they had to keep Bulkhead. 
So, uh, Prime, so in, in Prime was not really a continuation of animated. I, I remember at one point there was kind of no. like a an argument that it was like a... No, no, no. It had nothing to do with animated. It was a completely different show. That logic is so weird to me. Optimus Prime was introduced in a different show. Yeah, but he is the brand. And I guess. Bumpy is the brand. Right? Ratchet, Star, all of them were introduced in other shows. That's so weird. That, and that Bumble it's... and that Bumblebee from Transformers Prime is very clearly based on the movie Bumblebee. That, yeah, he's Absolutely. from the movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. that's from we another show. We gotta remember who, who the <laughs> initial executive producers were. It was Ortsman and Curtsy. Yeah. So they had to have their Bumblebee in the film, in, in the show. I was about to say, did they even bring any original characters? But yes, they did. My favorite character, Knockout. Uh, yeah, Knockout worked out great. And uh, we, we were very adamant with them that Knockout is a great character. He can't die in the end. He has to live because he has to be in the next show. He has, to, he has to continue on to the next show. He can't die. So we were very adamant about that. Um, Arachnia, we we wanted to call her Black Arachnia, and they they're like, no, it's why why would you call it Black Arachnia? That's Arachnia. She's yeah. Arachnia. Yeah, and then I told, I, I've told the whole story about you know that toy, but whatever. That's Transformers Prime. You know, it was just <laughs> yeah. off topic. We're talking yeah. animated. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's move back to animated. We were talking just, you know, Bulkhead was, was the subject of the conversation. So. Well, I, I, I know cool. because of Bulkhead, uh, back in the day, um, I know more information has came out since then, but I do remember some discussions back in the day that because of Bulkhead that there was some kind of animated connection because uh, those two, t- uh, two characters were so closely, they looked so close to one another. Um, that it's like, well, is this the continuation of animated? So uh, there, there was a, there was an argument uh, at one time. Well, then, you, then you look it. at RC and you look at everybody else, and you're like, no, obviously not. It wasn't so obvious at one time. Well, you're wrong. Yeah, uh, I am <laughs> quite. Remember, I am quite off. Remember, That's remember weird. what was happening at that time too. The hub was starting. And animated was a show that was co-produced with Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network, yeah. Therefore, nothing from that cartoon show or universe could carry forward into a sequel-like show. It it just couldn't. It's just the rights you can do it. So that show had to end, so that a new show with a new continuity could begin. But keep in mind, it's the characters are part of the brand, not a part of the show. We should so, do a future episode about Prime and the Hub in that time. Uh, and we should talk about Battleship, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, Pri- Prime, the, it started out so well. The, the first season had me, like, riveted. And then the second season started losing me. And then the third, uh, whenever the Beast Hunters came out, it totally jumped the shark on me. I, I had lost complete interest in the line. Yeah. I've been to Rick's talk on this, and I, I know he's got a bunch to say about it. Yeah. And, and I know I know we are supposed to be talking about animated, but, you know, it, it's kind of one of those jumping points that, you know, Transformers Prime. It, 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 I have a love-hate. I know Rick does, but I have a love-hate relationship with Prime. Here's the thing. You look at Transformers Prime, and you look at, at Beast Wars and Animated. And you can tell that clearly one does not fit with the others because Beast Wars and Animated were made with unison and love. Transformers Prime was a product. Yeah. Beast Wars was a work of love. Animated was a work of people who were fanboys and put in charge. Prime was a product. Let's Prime, design Prime a character like, and throw it Prime, out there. Prime was, we need Welker. We need Cullen. Check. We need big name producers. Orson Curse Me. Check. We need someone to do the music. Uh, whoever the Brian, guy was from Star Brian Trek. Tyler. 
Yeah. yeah. Brian Tyler, who leaked all the music as soon as, you know, we were about to put out the soundtrack. He leaked the music. There goes the soundtrack. Thanks, Brian. And you I, know, we got I, him. I got, got the theme song, Shaq. too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shaq. You know, all these things that accrue, accrue, you know, a large amount of money before you even get into the budget of the show. You know, it was a product designed to be on the hub, to be the flagship show of the hub. And you know what? G.I. Joe Renegades and that My Little Pony show were way better than Transformers Prime. Hmm. But Transformers is the, is the big boy brand because of the films. Now, how special. much, going back to animated, how much uh, of a... What did being on Cartoon Network do for animated? Did it Was it, was it any kind of significant impact on well, the brand? distribution. It's, it's distribution, you know, who can see it and where. But as soon as uh, the hub was announced, and I think as soon as the network found out that Hasbro was pulling the show, saying, all right, it's going to end at season three, they moved it to, like, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock and then weekdays at, like, 6.30. Yeah, it was some morning. crazy early time. Yeah, they're like, well, F you, Hasbro. We're gonna we're we're, contra- we're contractually obligated to put the show on, and we will, but we'll do it on our schedule. But initially, that relationship was actually a good one. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, Eric for a long Schindler, time too. They had the Unicron trilogy stuff there too. Uh yeah, but that wasn't necessarily produced. That wasn't produced by Cartoon Network. Well, it, true, that, true, that was just true. a distribution thing. Yeah. That was distribution. So th- it was just, uh, there's a different attitude at Cartoon Network. There's a lot of open doors there and a lot of people who get it. And that's why you have some crazy ass shows like uh, Gumball and, um, you know, Steven Universe and Rick and Morty, uh, Robot Chicken. L- lots of open doors, lots of creativity flowing in the place where Transformers Prime was a product. It was created as a product. Hmm. That's sad. I'm sorry. I just received a work-related text. I was reading it. Um, <laughs> uh, but the... Now, now, Cartoon Network... Whenever it first came... Uh, whenever it first, uh, first started air- airing animated, it was really hot. Everybody was tuning in every time the show was on. It was the talk of the town. Uh, I remember there was, like I said, there was some backlash at the beginning. The, like, these, what are these toys? Oh, my God. They look so childish. Well, uh, the and the toys then, were the show. Because the show came out a year before the toys did. Yeah. I but mean, We didn't get toys until season two. The, what what was the deal with that? Was it just a, a problem so, with I the? That was Prime. I know there was a that, delay, that was, but it was also Prime. Yeah. So Prime was way longer. I thought we Prime, had animated Prime. in like January, February, and then Toys by Botcon, which was April. Mm, I think it was longer than that. I may be wrong, but I thought I think it was longer. I think the Botcon stuff hit, and then it was like a few more months before it hit. Maybe. Everyone. Because so, uh, there was a there was an envy <laughs> fa- factor of all the people that picked up well, animated toys yeah. from around the area. So the, the so problem the with uh, animated, which was the same problem that Transformers Prime ran into, was the movies. And it was just, we need to get as much movie product out there as possible. We're selling movie products. It's gangbusters. Everything's got to be movie. Movie, movie, movie. So animated got pushed back. Because so much movie one product was still on the shelves. And then you hit Revenge of the Fallen, and that's when animated started showing up. Uh, and then with Prime, it was Dark of the Moon. It's like, we need to get as much Dark of the Moon product out there as possible. So we're going to take Transformers Prime, and we're going to delay it by a year. And so, you know, another side note, when you have a show that has a budget and you're counting on the royalties from the toys in order to pay for that show 
and then you say, hey, I'm going to not sell those toys for a year, you still have to pay for that show, even though you're not accruing any royalties from the toys, which is a real... Isn't that uh, the reason behind the first editions? It's a huge reason why the hub tanked. Same thing with My Little Pony. The My Little Pony toy team wanted nothing to do with the My Little Pony show. And there were no My Little Pony toys for that show until like a year and a half after the show came out. Because it wasn't until the show was like hugely successful that the toy team went, oh shit, we, we, we fucked up. We, sh- we should listen to what they're doing over there. Hmm. So, and then, you know, then there was Battleship and that huge $250 million bath that Hasbro took. And so Battleship sank my career along with the career of 1,200 other people. Sank your battleship. They you s- know what? I kind of like the battleship movie. I have to admit I did too. It, I didn't you know, hate it. I did not hate it. I didn't hate it. It incorporated some of the things from the game in it. You know, the missiles. I had, the I didn't. I didn't I care so anything cool. about uh, uh, a connection to the game. I just thought it was a cool sci-fi, a sci-fi I, flick. I hated the whole aliens. I hated the whole Halo-looking alien guys. Uh, that they looked like just Decepticons were invading. It uh, did feel very much like Transformers in a different yeah. universe. Yeah, even the trailer was like the lens flare, kind of just very Transformers inspired. Mm-hmm. I, poor Liam Neeson, man. The whole movie, he's like, the hell did I get myself into? Why am I in this movie? <laughs> no, Rihanna was cool in it. Oh, yeah. She's had quite a successful movie career since then. Well, <laughs> hey, she's in Ocean's 8 next month. Yeah, you know, what's that? What's that? You know, like seven years after Battleship? Uh, trying to trying to recover a career. All right, so I got I got some info about the rollout schedule of animated. We got the the feature length the three episode debut on December twenty sixth two thousand seven on Cartoon Network. That's right. And then we had yeah, Christmas, ba- right? Bacon stuff in April, and then by August September they started hitting stores in force. So yeah, about eight months. So uh, so there was about four or five months there that. Uh, I, I do I do distinctly remember people on message boards and everything. It's like, well, it must be nice to have an animated toy in hand. And we're like, yeah, actually, it is, because <laughs> you know everybody that went to the uh, to BotCon that year, pretty much either got one at BotCon or went to a surrounding area store and bought some. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And there were people buying them up and actually scalping them online. Uh, you know, to people willing to pay two or three prices for something that they could get at their local retailer just to, uh, if they just waited a few more months. <laughs> it was yeah, crazy. Animated came, came as a, at a really interesting time for me. I remember it so clearly because that was the first summer I could drive by myself. That's when I got my full-fledged license was the summer of uh, 2008. Did I so, just get a gray hair in my you beard? Did. <laughs> remember, that's why you keep me on this show. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> So I was at the already same time, thirty I was, years old at that point. <laughs> I know. I was already so pushing I was forty. Up, like Walmart exclusive Fracture and Big Daddy from the movie, but I was also picking up the first couple waves of animated, and the first couple waves of um, Universe Two with Sunstreaker and Prowl and those guys. But animated seemed to be king for about I don't know August to July June of uh, two thousand nine, so uh, ten months. And that was really cool. It seemed that the show was going really well. The toys were readily found in stores, if I remember correctly. At least that was my experience. It was a really cool time. Just that very brief, less than a year window, but animated was king for a Just little bit. Just the thing about animated that really endeared it to me while it was on uh, was all the, like like Rick said, all the little lessons of or little nods of love through uh, just sprinkled throughout. And even internal nods like angry archer <laughs> you know it's like or like um you know the ko burger or the uh oh no that was prime that was prime it was uh burger was it burger bot burger bot yeah burger bot but then like you know sludge was the oil was the mascot for the oil yes mm-hmm. yeah 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, I you think know. it was a take on like the the uh, the uh, Sin- Sinclair oil. Sinclair oil. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And then there was, uh, you know, you you had a uh, Spike and Carly in it, uh, and their their baby daughter. I forget what her name was. Daniela. Uh, <laughs> it would have been funny it's if in, it was Daniela. It's in the almanac. Her name. Um, I'll find it. Yeah, but I mean, it was just such it was such a great show, and you had great human characters in that show. You had the headmaster, you had uh, sorry, you had um, her dad Isaac. Was it Isaac? Some dad. Yeah. Mm. And the and dog had, name was Sparkplug. Yeah, you had you the had, fan you zone. <laughs> fan, fan zone. zone. <laughs> you had the guy. You look, look at all those great human villains they had. You didn't need to have a bad guy transformer in that show. They, I think they did a whole episode where the human villains just team up. Mm-hmm. You know, you had the time girl, you had the speedster. And the, what's her name, Professor Princess something? Yeah, yeah. Sparkle or something. Like with that. the unicorn that Wasn't fought. it Princess Sparkle? Yeah. Well, I think. Uh, I'll look. The, the Witwicky daughter's name is Nancy, by the way. Nancy, yeah. I wonder what was that, what was that a nod to. Had to been a nod to something other. You know, and you, you had all these great human characters on the show. And then you have, like, guys like, when they go to Cybertron, hey, there's Rat Trap, there's Trax, there's Grandis. You know, all the Grandis. All wonderful, that all was, wonderful that characters. one was out of left field. Well, the, the, uh, the bases, you had Metroplex and Fort Max, they were different government buildings. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the, the character was Professor Princess, and she rode... Essentially, a My Little Pony called Powdered Sugar. <laughs> that show was so over the top. I, I think one of my favorite scenes was uh, the uh, the scene where Optimus Prime was asking, like, uh, basically, how do humans procreate? And Sorry uh, kind of beckoned him down, and she whispered in his ear, and the look on his face is like, <gasps> <laughs> you know, it just. It's like I can't believe they inserted that in there, but it's there. You oh, know. there's oh my favorite scene was, you know, uh, with the Constructicon. He's got uh, Snarl as his pet, right? And but it's the it's it's Slag, yeah, right. So but they call him Snarl. So you know, Snarl runs up to him. And he's like, "This is my pet Dinobot, Snarl. You named him Snarl. I was gonna call him Slag, but he took offense to it." <laughs> yeah that was some scrap i remember that yeah one of the greatest moments it, when, uh, it was al one of the made... few times that transformers weird al being Rekgar, yeah. incredible weird al is Rekgar and, and he dares he to says, be stupid I he dared to be stupid <laughs> and then when weird al went to bakon he he did his weird al impression of every transformer on the show but he kept doing it in the Rekgar voice he's like i'm optimus prime he did like all the care, but it's like still Rekkar's voice. Yeah. You know, it, just talking about it makes me want to go back and watch it. You know, me I, too. I think I'm going to. I, I don't have season one though. I've got like season three. <laughs> oh, well I'll send you mine when I send you the RID stuff too. And it has such a beautiful ending. It gets wrapped up so well. It does. And, you know, the all spark fragments, they pick them all up and where do they put them? They put him in this little thing, and what does that this little necklace look like? It's the Matrix, Matrix. Matrix ship. Yes, and it's hanging around the neck of Optimus Prime, right? Mm-hmm. And then yep. uh, I think uh, Derek explained that at the end, all the R Spark crystals are getting sucked in, right? And it gets sucked out of Starscream's head, and he turns, you know, gray and he falls dead. So there was a question at a Bakon. Well, what about you know Scrapper yep. and the Dinobots and everyone? He's like. Well, they were far enough away that they didn't die. There, there are spot crystals couldn't get sucked out of their heads. Yeah, I think Slipstream and the gang survived too. Same reason. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, that show gave us Bulkhead. It gave us Lugnut. It gave us Lockdown, and Lockdown moved on to become a movie villain. Mm-hmm. And I so wanted Lance Henriksen to be into it. I, I actually. <sighs> I, I was at a comic San Diego Comic Con one year, and I got to speak to Lance Henriksen. I'm like, "Yeah, we're we're you know I'm gonna tell you something secret. We're re- we're gonna put Lockdown in the next movie. He's gonna be the bad guy." He's like, 
yeah, I, uh, you know, I definitely would want to do that. I would, I would definitely want to be, you know, that character. I had a great time as that character. So it just, for whatever who reason, wa- who just, wound up doing him in the live action movie? It was a, the guy who does uh, the Bumblebee. Oh, he does all the voices on set for the actors, and he does Bumblebee, and he ended up doing Jetfire, and he did Lockdown. I think his name is Mark something. Mark, Mark, who gives a fuck? I think that I think that's how you say it. Hopefully Mark he, Allen. hopefully Mark he does Ryan. not watch this video. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Mark Ryan, if you want to be on the show, Mark Ryan, please come talk to us. We, yeah, we will, we'll talk to you. Please, yeah. Hey, man, you, you, you whatever. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> well, can we uh, say what I want? Can we talk about Bluster and Trench for a minute? Sure. All right, so before this episode came on, or before we started recording tonight, I talked to our good friend, Sid Beckett, who had a big, big part of making these toys a reality. And he told me some secret information to share with you guys about it. So the first is that they went with Pipes and Huffer first because they had the Bumblebee kind of mold ready to go, but they didn't want to cheap out and release a whole bunch of repaints before they did something kind of unique. So they wanted to start on something interesting and, and not just, oh, look, it's Bumblebee and Wasp and Clip Jumper and Carrera and Bug Bite and, you know, literally everybody. They would have gotten th- up to all of them. There's a lot of love in that project. Uh, after Afterwards, they were going to do, do all the Bumblebee stuff, and then they were going to make animated Red Alert. And it was going to be a bigger figure, uh, probably kind of deluxe or maybe even a little bit bigger sized. And that was going to be really cool. And after that, they were going to do Mixmaster and Scrapper. And if those went well, they were going to look into doing Omega. Now, I've actually got uh, a image of animated Red Alert up on the screen. So if you're, if you're watching the YouTube video, that's what it would have looked like. What, one of my favorite things about you know the little details, look at her arm. She has the Armada Red Alert weapon mm-hmm. on her arm. It's that little detail like that which makes it so cool. Yep, and the uh, the mech idea is one that they designed could have the the uh, interchangeable attachments too. Well, it never it's... got to hard copy stage or anything, but you know, the in the you know the CAD planning phase, they definitely had planned for that. Uh, what he told me is that they are very proud that they got them out. They are sad that they didn't didn't I don't know catch fire as much as they thought they would, but they're proud that uh, they're in a lot of people's collections today. I think part of the reason though they didn't catch on is what we were talking about earlier: how animated once it was finished, kind of felt like it was. Nobody really don't, was don't. clamoring for it. Yeah, right. I think if they'd done it maybe later or earlier, it could have could have done something yeah. more. Especially you know, for characters that weren't on the show, right? Did they ever even appear in the background? They did. They did. In one of the Cybertron scenes, yeah. You know, and I kind of wonder if that has anything to do with why I feel the way, the way I do about going back and getting animated. It's like... I, I don't really feel compelled to. I, and the thing is, is I, 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 I list that the show doesn't, doesn't still have the fire with me as it once did. But in retrospect, and in, and in full disclosure, I recently went back, and as much as I love G1, I grew up on G1. It's, it's my favorite era. I love the G1 characters. I went back and started to marathon the G1 episodes. I stopped after about five episodes. Yeah. I can't watch it anymore. I've watched it so many times. It's like, I know what's going to go on. I, well, I, they're very dated. Story, story-wise, story they're very dated as well. You know, it's hard to watch some of those Thundercats and He-Man episodes. Um, it's just a different style of storytelling that... It's we, not so much that... About our own. It's not My some, kids love them. It's not so much that for me with G1. I think it's the fact that I have literally seen every episode so many damn times 
and I have devoted so much of my life to this franchise, I really don't need to see them again. <laughs> you know, the, the if I want to see the characters, I could probably watch like a one-off episode every now and then. Uh, you know, like, you know, Grimlock's New Brain is like one of my favorite episodes uh, of all time because that's where the Technobots and the Terracons were introduced. And the way they introduce the Technobots, uh, they're like a birth, a birthing of, of Grimlock. You know, it was like, who would have ever thought that one of the smartest Transformers would have come from Grimlock? Um, I just love that story. Um, but I don't feel compelled to go back and watch the series as a whole as much anymore. I don't remember the last time it's been so long that I sat and watched the, the series as a whole, but you can literally sit, I can literally sit and talk about the entire series because I know it so well. And I think that's why I can't watch G1 in its entirety anymore. I, but animated, it's not. It's different. Uh, with animated, I don't know what it is. I just don't feel, uh, you know, like t talking about it tonight. I could probably go back and watch an episode or two that I have on DVD and satiate my desire for animated. But sitting and marathoning it, I don't think I could anymore. And I, w I wonder how many other people have that have that hmm. feeling. See, I, I find that animated and Beast Wars are the easiest ones to just sit and just plow right through every episode. Mm -hmm. and, and and I don't want people sit there and say, well, Deron hates Transformers or, you know, is, is starting to hate Transformers. It, it's, it's not. And I'm not saying that the, that the shows are bad. I'm not say, saying that they're disinteresting. I just don't have the fire to go back and watch the shows over and over again. And I don't know why. I, I really don't know why I don't have that fire. Maybe I am just getting old. Uh, and, you know, the toys are... Uh, it's, it's getting to the point now where the toys are about the only thing that I really feel compelled to go after anymore. Um, although, I, I would like to own, like, R.I.D. in its entirety on DVD. Uh, simply... I got you. Yeah, simply because it's got... It, it's a part of Transformers lore, uh, and I've got all of G1, all of Beast Wars, all of Beast Machines, and I've, I think I've got the biggest part of Armada. I know I have Energon on DVD. It just you know, seems naked not to have it. Just a, a brief aside about R.I.D., uh, recently, as of the recording of this, probably farther in the past by the time you guys hear it, uh, Hasbro's just Saban. bought Sabin. Yeah. Saban, Saban, I'm Saban sorry. Entertainment, yeah. But that's who aired R.D., so we might be getting it finally, officially. I'm kind of wondering. States. I'm I'm kind of wondering if that if now that they own everything that was under the uh, Saban banner, uh, or Saban yeah. Entertainment anyway, uh, if if they do have that intention of going back and getting the R.I.D. rights, maybe I thought there was one more piece that maybe Disney had to do with it. I'm not entirely sure where I'm getting that from, but uh, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I thought Saban was also purchased by Disney at one point, but um, don't know. I guess, I guess not. Maybe part of the library was. I don't know. Oh. That might be. But I do I do have a couple more anime things I want to show you. Okay. First is that animated and third party may not be dead. Uh, you guys might not remember, but there's a company called A Plus Toys. They're working on animated Dirt Boss. Yeah, but they've been working on that for like for a while. Yeah, like yeah, but maybe they say it's not dead. We'll see. But the other thing I wanted to show you was this prototype animated Minosaur head. Oh. Oh. So um, Azim Vangsta from Renderform did some work with a company to try and get an upgrade kit. Wasn't that designed for the uh... set? Yeah, that was designed by Mark Wong. Yeah, probably designed by Mark Wong. And then uh, physically made by Renderform. I picked one of these up a couple years ago when he offered them. But uh, it's a nice little relic of what could have been. Yeah, I made a Minosaur. I, I, I would have given anything if there had been some kind of upgrade set to make that. We, that we talked about it. Yeah. 
while we were doing the bot concept, but we just just no money to do it. Yeah, it would been a lot of extra parts. It definitely would have been a third party venture, and unfortunately, I was I was really shocked a third party it. didn't jump on it. But at the same time, it is a limited set, and there's and only. It was animated three years after mm. and right and and but yeah. it's combiner so you know. but then again but, you know those molds were not unique to that botcon set and you know if uh, they could have easily put out a, a a combiner upgrade set that you could use with the standard toys um it wouldn't would it have looked exactly like minasaur no only if you'd had the botcon set but I don't think combiner craziness had quite started just yet. Aside from the Botcon 16 set, uh, I, th in my opinion, the Botcon 2010 set with the uh, the animated Minasaur, I 11. think that was it. Eleven. Yep. God, no. 2010 was the G2 set. 2010 yeah. was G2. Uh, okay. Uh, see age. Uh, I think the, the the animated set was probably one of the most cohesive sets, in my opinion. Um, as far sure. as I mean, because as a set, they they were naturally to go together. Now that doesn't say uh, say that some of the other sets didn't work and and everything. I just think as far as a, co a cohesive unit as a set, it made sense to me. If that makes yeah, any, that, if that makes that any sense. That animated set started off so different too. I mean, we were throwing around so many ideas. Um, we, oh, man, we were throwing around so many ideas. Uh, one point we had bulkhead, a striker. Uh, we had the Voyager Megatron as uh, Sky Gary. Uh, I think we had Hot Rod, a Sideswipe. Didn't they? Uh, well, that wound up being Breakdown, though, didn't it? And yeah, it was, the, yeah. Yeah. What happened was, um, I think it was Brian Savage who who said, none of these ideas feel like they belong together. Like none of these characters feel like they belong together in a set. And I think he was the one who says we need like one of these, you know, one of these teams. We need a team. Like, you know, we got a bunch of cars. Like, what's this team here? He doesn't know the names, mm -hmm. so you know the Senecons. So it was him who, who said we needed a team, and Senecons were born from that. They I, was... I distinctly remember there was even we even did the Photoshop of that Megatron as a uh, Sky Gary. Whose idea was it to make Drag Strip a drag queen, basically? <laughs> uh, I think that was Trent Troop and Greg Sepalak. And then uh, I said, we got to do Toxitron. And Boom. then Aaron, Aaron said, Is, it can be Toxitron, but it's got to be Optimus Prime. I'm like, what? You have to have Optimus Prime in the set. He's got to be. So that's why in the comic book, it's revealed that it's actually Optimus Prime in disguise. So technically it's Optimus Prime, but it's uh, yeah. everybody else is talking to talk Yeah, Yeah, technically it's Optimus Prime, yeah. So that was, that was the workaround. Toxitron Optimus Prime. Yeah. Uh, man, it was, it's been so long. I'm just trying to think about like who else we were. I think at one point you guys were trying to make Blackout into Bugly. Or something like that. But that might have been later than the actual set. Yeah, I don't think that was with the actual set. No, right. Because Hasbro said that Bacon couldn't use the three unreleased molds. Hasbro mm. needs to put him out first. Hmm. So that kind of killed that. Yeah, that's why those three figures couldn't be weren't in that set. Otherwise, they would have been. Hmm. Yeah, Blur's Cheetor. Yeah, I thought that, that went pretty well. That Doing one, I kind of, I kind of thought was a misstep. But um, did that have the spots, or were they like the hexagon shapes? They were spots. I think it was supposed yeah. to be hexagons, but it came out as spots. Yeah, that's what that's what killed it for me on that one. Was a hexagon more of a uh, uh, trans tech well, homage, or he wasn't a beast; he was a car. 
So it was like, why would he have spots, right? So like, let's the hexagons. Spots, hexagons but, look, look would look more car. Okay. Yeah, would yeah, would have felt you know more Tron like. If I remember correctly, they had a, a sort of fade on them, which it wasn't just spots, but uh, it was not hexagons. Um, you know what would be a neat uh, idea is take some of the animated designs, but give them more of a modern toy or, or, or a, 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 a mainline toy aesthetic. Like, you, for example... We got lockdown in animated, and then there was a lockdown in what was it? Generations. Revenge of the Fallen. Revenge of the Fallen. Was it Revenge of the Fallen? Well, uh, and, uh, Generations got Axor, wasn't it? Or was it not really? Uh, it was the other one. Uh, Reveal the Shield. Yeah. Or Reveal the Shield. Or whatever was Yellow Card at the time. Yeah. Uh, Reveal the Shield. Hunt. Hunt for the Decepticons. Yeah. Hunt for the Decepticons. So, yeah, that's what that, so that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I mean, it's an animated originally an animated. Well, Design, but brought over into more of a, into the mainline aesthetic. There's Lugnut from the, you know, from the Generations line. I hated that toy. I know everyone, like, raised Really? I hate that thing. Yeah. Why? I, I hate it so much. The arms, I hate how they, f they spin and flop and, ugh, I just can't. The spring-loaded hand, I hate it. I hate it so much. I didn't, I didn't hate that toy. But I know. Yeah. Only one who does, but man, I hate that toy. <laughs> you know, go, going along that route, uh, Aaron had pitched something for the 30th anniversary, which never got out of the pitch stage because nobody understood it. And he didn't tell me he was working on it. He just showed like the art, and I was like, blown away by it. Take the more recent characters and do them in G1 style. So... The concept art was bulkhead, but he had the G1 Trailbreaker transformation. I could get on board with that. Right? Uh, lockdown. So basically blocky toys. Yeah, G1 versions of newer characters. Yeah, like if you put Rescue Oh my Speedway god, that would be an like awesome subline. I, uh, I think Lockdown was uh, Sideswipe. Um... Forget who else was in there. There was a couple guys in there. I think he had four or five done. Now, would there would this be new tooling or would it be just that remolds new, of either either new tooling or you know remolding certain pieces on existing on the encore stuff? Mm. So the one I clearly remember the most because it looked the most badass was that bulkhead out of that G1 Trailbreaker. It it was just. I, I would I would buy every one of those if they if they were to actually see the light of day. Uh, they never got out of uh, you know just concept drawings. He pitched it and nobody got it. Everybody wanted no. That's, what no? We don't live in the past. We don't but, live in the past. But you know the, the current regime went, might be totally all over that though. Yeah, but you know what? The current regime doesn't have those drawings. So. Well. <laughs> You know, <laughs> somebody needs to just show up on the door and say, hey, here. Fuck them. Fuck them, huh? They can do whatever they want. You know what? And they're doing a pretty good job right now. So can't, let them, you can't, know, can't, let them, can't let them do what it. they want. They, they, they're they doing a good choice as far as character selection goes. Yeah, You know, I think I'm, I'm kind of thinking with the popularity of Encore as it was in Japan, I'm sure that it would still do fairly well just based on, on, on the longevity of the, uh, of the Encore line over there. Uh, if those toys were to ever be produced, I would think they would be internationally well received. I would think. Is that recently pseudo revealed G one hot rod reissue? Maybe a soft relaunch of Encore over here? I'm I'm kinda Ooh. hoping. But I'm you know, that's that's one of those grain of salt things because it came out of left field, totally unannounced, and what why why are they doing this? I'm not complaining, but why are they doing this? It just 
and it's it's the G one box though, rather than you it's, know the it's a G one it's box a, or the it's a modern a modern interpretation of the G one box. It's like yeah. they took the the innards of a G one or uh, the innards of a modern box with the uh, the plastic and uh, and yeah. the uh, and the rattan ties and then put it in a in a G one style box. I'll eat it up. I, I already have a G one hot rod right here. And I, I'll I'll buy another one, even at thirty five bucks. I don't know of how many I would buy. I would buy at thirty five bucks. I would probably buy one just to keep sealed if it's in a retro style box like that, because that that would be awesome. What other animated characters, though? I mean, going back to my question, what other animated characters would look good in a more mainline aesthetic now? Slipstream. She did it already, though, but she could get another toy. Right. She she got, you know, she got two toys, didn't she? She's got two toys. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, Lugnut, <clears throat> Lockdown. Lockdown was in the movie. He had a great third party toy come out. I'm surprised Oil Slick hasn't gotten more love now. He, he wasn't was in the like, show. He was in like one, one episode. Scene. He yeah. was in like one scene and had two lines. That uh, version of Prowl yeah. could make a comeback though. You know, uh, Braun from animated was really cool and striker and cyclonus and hot shot oh, sentinel prime so different from you know like the dark of the moon sentinel prime that came later sentinel prime really cool and you know one of the things the we've, prime. we've uh carried forward is that magnus hammer mm-hmm. the uh, forge of solace or what it is that what it is forge, no. forge of solace prime yeah, yeah. was that later did it? Uh, didn't it just? Uh, it we saw the hammer in animated, but didn't it get uh, named the Forge of Solace Prime or something in an, in Prime? In Prime, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Magnus using a hammer came from. Yeah, animated. like that's, that's now, to me like that's a signature weapon for Magnus now is a hammer. Mm-hmm. Now let's go back and uh, and do it backwards. Uh, toys or characters that we would love to see in animated. And I, I haven't been privy or I haven't seen, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, so these are characters, these are characters that didn't appear in the show. Yeah. That we would have okay. liked that, that we show. would like, uh, what about like double cross? Didn't, uh, was there ever a design of animated design of double cross? Like any of the monster bots? You gonna make no. me look. I think there was a repugnance, but I think it was like a very cartoony. Yeah, I think it was like part of a drink menu at Bacon or something like that. Yeah, some or some like a, a menu that. in the book. Uh, Although you said double, it made me think of Punch Counter Punch. I think that would have been a cool concept to have an animated. Mm-hmm. Where the Autobots are so underpowered, the you Decepticons know, are like really big villains. That's you know, perhaps one four, who could play both. I mean, I guess we had Shockwave. Never mind. You know, in se- season four, they were going to do a Shattered Glass episode. Ooh. Yes, that'd be yeah. cool. They were going to do a Shattered Glass episode, and then we are going to get Devastator, where uh, Bulkhead was going to be the center. He was going to be the torso. And uh, the other two guys were going to be the arms. Uh, who's the dirt dirt boss? He was dirt boss the is head, the head. Yep. The head, and I think someone knew would have been the pants. <laughs> the pants. Yeah, there were there was gonna be a fourth guy, a fourth, fourth guy, and they needed a fifth one, so they got Bulkhead. They they forced him against his will. And it would have been cool if they would have called him Devastator, but uh, but uh, but maybe an R.I.D. Uh, build uh, or a build king or a landfill colors. Crickets well, chirping. Yeah. Yeah, you lost us on that. There's, there's, so there's, four, want, there's four characters. Well, no, no, there's five. There's four Constructicons, and they get depth, and they get Bulkhead to be the fifth guy. Oh, well, you said a fourth guy, a fourth guy a minute ago. I just yeah, yeah, there would have been off. a fourth Constructicon. Okay. Yeah, Dirt Boss, Mix Master, Scrapper, and Pants Dude plus Bulkhead yeah. makes that Pants Dude. Yeah, probably you know Erector or something. <laughs> Animated Erector was a thing. Yeah, that was a weird time. <laughs> oh gosh, just 
you know, animated animated is one of those fun things to talk about and fun uh, fun things to to remember. And I'm glad in retrospect, looking back on it, I'm glad it is part of Transformers. Uh, whether or not I actually own any of them, you know, I don't care. That's that's me. But I wonder, you know, it's one of those eras of Transformers that you don't see a lot of people talking about, honestly, though, online. I don't see a lot of people talking about animated. I don't see a lot of people talking about Prime anymore. I don't see a lot of people talk, uh, uh, talking about R.I.D., for that matter, the mm-hmm. original R.I.D. Out of sight, out of mind, man. Uh, I, I have everything animated. I, I got all the bumper battlers. I got the activators. I got the legends. Uh, all the regular mainline figures. Uh, I got the, the third-party ones. I don't have the Mario Luigi ones yet. Um, These are love, actually love, my girlfriends right here. So <laughs> I, I got a couple of the ones that you know may, may you know have you know maybe there were a few samples of them laying around in a closet and you know maybe they ended up in my basement. I still want that vortex blur. I've been thinking about customizing one by myself. Yeah, I don't have that one. Uh, that might be my favorite might, mold from the line. Might have a thundercracker sitting around somewhere. It's pretty cool. Maybe thundercracker and thundercracker never came out in Japan either, mm-hmm. right? We, we all thought he would. It made so much sense, and, and then nothing. there was the activators, and then activators dirge came out. Activators dirge came out in America. Right, yeah, but not, and then activators, no. activators, he, he came out Japan. sound wave, or no, no, sound blast, sound, the white one, the white one never came out. No, yeah, I have, I have a few of those. There's like a bag of them. Whose idea was to give sound wave uh, a laser beak keytar? Uh, that so sounds like an Eric Siebenhaler thing. He plays the bass. Um. That's so badass. <laughs> oh, no, no. Rap Bat was the key. Rap Bat's the key. Tar. Was it yeah. Retar? Like laser Beak yeah. is a flying V guitar. Okay. Yeah. You know, what would, what would have Ravage been, you know? Drum set. Drum set? <laughs> Drum set. Recorder? Maybe. No, Ravage could have been the keyboard, and then Rumble and Frenzy could have been the drum set. That would have made sense. Mm-hmm. They could symmetrical yeah. dock like Jetfire Jetstorm. Yeah, yeah, and they could still have the pounding. The pile thing. drivers. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. But but every time they'd they'd pound the ground, it sounded like drums. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, there'd be a beat to it. <laughs> yeah. there'd, there'd be a beat to it. Absolutely. Right, so the activator sound wave, the black one sound blaster only came out in Japan. Right. And the white one didn't come out anywhere. Right. And then there was activators that I think came out in Japan that didn't come out here, right? Like repaints, like Thundercracker. Either came out here. I think Thundercracker maybe. I don't know. I have one in like a pink. Oh, uh, Skywarp. Was that it? Activator Skywarp came out in like pink packaging. Ramjet and Skywarp and Sound Blaster were Japanese exclusives. Okay. All right. There you go. So Thundercracker Activator came out over here. Yes. He was in Wave 3 with Patrol Bumblebee. Yeah. We never got a Wasp. Uh, I would have loved an no animated wasp. hound. I would have loved a hound. Wouldn't he have been really close to Bulkhead, though? In a way. No, he would have been. He would have been a jeep. Hound would have been a jeep. Animated prowl. That and that he, wasn't and, that wasn't a motorcycle. Oh, that's yeah. That wasn't. Oh, yeah. I guess. Uh, God damn. You'd have to call him something else. Yeah, that like prowl street, is so Call unique. him Streetcar sure. or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it'd be Street Star. Man. Yeah. That prowl is so unique to that show. That's what I'm thinking. He could come back as a, a classics thing, or like you were saying, the redesign new characters as G1 kind of type figures. Yeah, I mean, he's got that Sandman. Animated prowl. prowl. Yeah. You know, the sidecar turns into his, you know, booster armor. So badass. Kind of makes you want to go back and play with some of those toys now, doesn't it? <laughs> and I've got someone sitting next to me just that I brought up for this show, and yeah, I've got to go back into the box now. <laughs> Man, I think 
I think I have like seven or eight of those auto troopers I've yet to open. I love troop building. I never got one. Yeah, they're one. neat. Their, their color scheme is really great. And you know, uh, if you flip the head around, it's a different face. Did you ever see that? Flip the head around on it, it's, a, it's another face that we never used. Who is that? Like that? Oh. Oh, no, no. It's not Baymax. Um, shit. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it wasn't. Kind of looks like E.T. Screw holes. Or uh, yeah. Johnny Five, maybe. Shit. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was an Auto Trooper. Sorry. There was somebody that if you turn the head around, there's another face on the back of it, and it, it never got used. Not punch a counter punch. No, no. You know that's that's a character you mean, that you mean small head. Yeah, small head. Small head. That's a character I'm surprised that have has not seen a mainline release with especially with all this uh you know revisiting of g1 characters and and, and everything we, i'm saying we talked about a shattered glass version of counter counter punch for bakhan called kick counter kick i like what, it what would his colors been uh, who the fuck cares it's, just, it's that, just the name we do have that power of the primes listing on amazon for counter punch hmm yeah, and don't, don't know what that right. is yet. And Repugnus and Shuttle Blast Off. I've, and I've been Prime. hearing through a lot of people that yeah, but we we've seen the packaging for Blast Off. <laughs> yep, and we've seen stock art of Nemesis Prime. Oh, breaking! Oh, I guess it's not breaking news since this is a pre-record. But masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron, boom! What masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron? <sighs> Sergio was just texting me. Oh my god. Look at her butt. And there's a new Masterpiece Megatron coming. Masterpiece Megatron looks really good too. Masterpiece. Like G1 Megatron? It looks it's it looks like G1 Megatron. Oh man. This Beast Wars what I'm looking at is incredible, Duran. Uh, oh. Where where, yeah. where are we seeing this at? It's the internet. Hang on, buddy. I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah. And right. there's a I'll shock, pull, shock wave. Uh, sh- pull it up, and I'll I'll will see it on. And there's a shock wave reissue coming where the where he's got two hands instead of a hand and a blaster. And the Megatron, it's like it's like the G1 toy Megatron. With the head and the side cannon and everything. God damn. Okay. I only yeah. have the Beast Wars Megatron. Now thing, you get, so. Okay. All right. I'm here, gonna, I'll, I'm I'll, going to uh, screen share this. Let's see here. This I'll is on this uh, TFW, and here is a Beast Beast Wars MP43 Beast Wars Megatron Gray prototype revealed. I will buy this. Yeah. I don't I don't collect Beast Wars, but this is one toy I will right. buy. I just sent you the other ones in Messenger, Duran. Oh. oh, it's it's Toy Shockwave and Toy Megatron. I see. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so now Shockwave has uh, fully articulated hands. And uh, you can replace the, the cannon with another hand. And it looks like the Megatron comes with the stock and barrel. Oh, these are repaint. Oh, repaints of them. Oh, yeah. well, the toy toy colors of Shockwave. People have been begging for that uh, for a long time. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, that's a repaint of the Megatron. Yeah, yeah it's oh, the, okay. the side cannon. Looks and an, like and it looks like he's got a new head. head too. And a new head, toy head. Yeah. Okay, that's what the side cannon was throwing me off. Okay, so the side cannon threw me off, and the head is definitely new. Um, he's got the G one stickers on him. Yep. And then there's the white uh, Sunstreaker. No pics of that that I can see, at least. Uh, I just sent those to Duran. All right, oh. I'm, I'm slowly. Uh, they're in the messenger. I'm the slowly. Messenger. I'm slowly pulling them up here. I don't know why Facebook is being like stupid on me right now. Yeah, the the police streaker is called Corden. I am not excited about that at all. I, I guess what? because he looks awesome. He can hang out with Clampdown. I guess it's mainly because I I don't get I don't collect the. Uh, you can sit with Diaclone Ultra Magnus. Yeah, I don't and have. Clamp down and Red Bumblebee. 
and Road Rage. And Road Rage. And the deep cover that I know is coming soon. Yeah. Eventually. Deep cover. <laughs> eventually. You know they'll get to him eventually. Man, I hope so. You know they'll get the Tigatron eventually. They'll they'll do a new head for okay. the for the tiger and for the robot. So with Beast Megatron, can I please get Masterpiece T Rex? Oh. He'd have to have the thick little wings on his head, though. You know what's okay. what? Uh, what's awesome is they took the uh, the on the MP36 that's uh, MP36 plus, and they took the barrel and swiveled it around on his hip, like the G1 toy. That that is awesome. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, because it, it just basically on a swivel swivel joint. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I haven't opened my actual 36 yet because well, I, I, I'm about to move. So, You know there's going to be a Beast Wars Megatron repaint where he's got the toy accurate head with the little wings off the side. Battle mask. Yeah. Man, if that, that looks sh- good. if that thing shoots water, that, that'd be the tits right there. Be that'd the be tits. insane. Gotta Peter, have dump, that your, water dump your two hundred dollar toy in water. <laughs> so looks like the uh, uh, the Diaclone Sunstreaker. What is it, Gordon? Gordon is that? That's Gordon. Yeah, Gordon. His name's Gordon. Go- Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, has a totally new head. He looks like very it. toy yeah. accurate head. Yeah, and the, and the lights on the chest. He's got his titty lights. Yeah, his red, his very red nipples. Those look like new lights. I know Clampdown used the MP Prowl lights, so these might be new lights. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Titty wow. lights. Titty lights. And you know what? In a year and a half from now when the show airs and we're all opening up our MP Dinobots for the first time, if that thing ever comes out, we'll, you know, we'll be like, oh, remember? Now we know when this was recorded because they're talking about, you know, MP Megatron coming out. Yep, and it came out just today, like right at this moment. So you know exactly when this was recorded. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I guess I'm buying Primal again. When when is that Dinobot supposed to come out? June, isn't July, it? July, June. Well, th- this episode will likely air. Um, let's see here. Probably end of May, first of June. I'm guessing. I'm yeah, guessing. It's on this Saturday. It'll be on a Saturday, yes. Now, uh, a little. Well, I would say a. a well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say this because this episode will actually air after the episode I was going to. I was going to highlight. So never mind. <laughs> All right. So let me. Throw July twenty first is Dinobot. Uh, who's going to? I think we all knew that Megatron was going to be likely the next Beast Wars character. Uh, for getting repaints and remolds, because you know Tigatron's going to come eventually. Uh, who is going to be the next Beast Wars masterpiece if they Lost get to it? Rhinox. See, I, I think those are both good choices. What's yours? Uh, I think I'd have to go with Waspinator. I also need Masterpiece Buzzsaw. We've talked about my love of Buzzsaw before. Or, you know... Tarantulas would be great too. But... Tarantulas would be great. I mean, you really couldn't get a black arachnia from him at all. I wish they'd hurry up and finish the damn Autobot cars. All right, we talked about this. Yes, them too. <laughs> it's like well, it's, you're so fast, man. It's, it's like it's typical. It's, it's it's typical freaking Takara. They they go almost. It's like it's like they they go almost all the way and then just don't finish. She said, yeah. <laughs> "Yeah, they're they're bad for that. They're living in the past." All right. So after Beast Wars, what's going to be the next line that gets masterpiece? All right. I'm, I think R.I.D. Armada. or Armada. Yeah, I'm saying Armada Prime and Armada Megatron. Well, I think we'll either get a fire super fire convoy or a uh, it'll be the Armada Prime. I don't think we'll get super fire convoy, but I th- think. Next show, he got an it's encore. Be Armada they Megatron or Armada, Armada Optimus. Now, didn't for, Armada Megatron, Armada Optimus come in second place behind Star Saber when they did that contest? Yes, I 
thought Power Master Prime. I think he came in third. Oh, maybe. Third. Yeah. The uh, uh, God Gen- or, the, the, or the Genrai. <laughs> those people are getting to that age, you know? Early 20s. Yep, it's getting close. We we have Sergio. Like, like He grew up on Armada. I grew up on Beast Wars. He's that much younger than I am. That He, he had Armada first. Yeah, so... Um... Plenty yeah. of fans his age. That's, it's that's only a, a matter a of time. Only a matter of time before we get our mod Optimus and Megatron, and I'm I'm looking forward to them. I'm looking forward to them. They're pretty sweet. I guess we'll get Hotshot too because he's such a big deal. Which version of Hotshot? Our mod Hotshot. Well, and the Is easy it? repaint will be Powerlink's Hotshot. Yeah, uh, but who cares? I, don't know if I want or them to do I... all the Powerlink's ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is hot rod color, so... Oh, well, yeah. I, you know, it is a hot rod color. But then I'd want that unreleased universe smokescreen. Yeah. I do want that, man. I should have bought that on eBay. I got a couple of those universe figures floating around. Dron, can you cut this part and make it a different show? We no. Animated we can do I, I, yeah. I was actually getting ready to say, I think we need to wrap this one up. Uh, we've actually went kind of long. It's, uh, we're at about an hour and 45 now. So um, well, We did have breaking news, at least for us. Yes. Breaking news. Well, breaking. I may throw this one up next weekend, You know, which which be the, uh, the episode of the 19th. Um, because, well, like I said, I'm celebrating my birthday that weekend. So That's when I'm moving. Yes. No, week after that. Sorry. Um, oh hey, Duran. Yes. Oh, did you talk about the fire thing on the show or after the show or before the that show? That was before the show. That was oh. before the show. Yeah, um, it's 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 just on CNN. I I just checked CNN to see if there was any other Transformer news. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just you know Ford suspends F one fifty production due to fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and a little bit of a little uh, I guess editorial note uh, for a lot of viewers. Um, my workplace, I, I drive a semi, and as many of you know, I'm a truck driver. Uh, I deliver to Ford, and uh, as, as many people may know from watching the news, like Rick saw there, uh, Ford, uh, uh, a Ford plant or a Ford supplier in Michigan had a terrible accident uh, here the last few days, and it has impacted... Uh, Thousands of workers, uh, several uh, Ford plants have actually sh- uh, ceased production because of this. Um, and the plant that I deliver to here in Kentucky uh, is affected, but it has not shut down completely. I am on an extremely limited work schedule as of this recording. Uh, however, whenever they do re- resume production, uh, I am going to be working Mondo overtime. Uh, so... Um, Several uh, several episodes will be pre-recorded, and this is one of them that will likely be used either uh, on the 19th or sometime after that. Um, we do have a episode scheduled. I've been in talks with uh, uh, Mr. Donnie Mason, uh, who will be representing TF Expo uh, coming up this summer, late this summer, early fall, uh, out in Kansas City. Uh, he'll be on to talk about this uh, uh, great convention coming up. Uh, very soon, if not already, by the time this is aired. Um, uh, but right now, as we're talking, I'm in talks with them, um, and we should have a live episode in three weeks from now, uh, which uh, that should be his episode. Um, and if we can't do it live, uh, I'm going to try to do a pre-record someday. Um, if it has to be an early afternoon recording and just me and myself and him, uh, so be it. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually impacted personally by the, uh, by the incident that happened in Michigan. Um, and, uh, it's right now I'm kind of in a holding, holding pattern at work. I, I worked yesterday, I'm off today, which I normally am working right now. Uh, I would normally be working tomorrow, um, and as of right now, I have no work schedule for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so it's going to suck for me on my paycheck. <laughs> uh, but maybe uh, uh, some uh, um, unemployment will be um, an answer for a, for a short term. So I don't know. We're hoping. 
but you know, if, if a lot of people are saying, well, why, why, why are we not doing live shows? That's why, because I am working my butt off and earning a paycheck because I have to have a nine to five job or, well, it's not a nine to five job. It's like five in the evening till five in the morning, but yeah. It's not because we don't love you. Yes. We, we do I, love you. I don't, I don't love you. And if, yeah, if, doesn't love you. The rest if, of us do. If you do, if you do love us here on TFYLP, there is a thing that you can do, and it's right up there at the top of the screen, uh, right, right up there. Uh, Patreon.com/slash/TFYLP. Um, you can go on there and uh, help support us each month. Uh, with without your donations and your support, liking, sharing, subscribing, uh, your Patreon, uh, we couldn't be here. Uh, it is because of you the listeners and the viewers uh, that we uh, we exist. We hope that we entertain you and inform you each and every week. That's our goal uh, because we love Transformers and we know you love Transformers or else you wouldn't be watching this right now. Um, and we, we want to put forth the best possible show that we can, uh, both video, audio, and everything. I know, you know in recent past that we've had some issues and hopefully you can see that we've been working on that diligently and i continue to work on that um as of this recording uh my computer the new build computer is a little over halfway pulled off, uh, paid off um a lot of the major components have already been purchased the monitor has already been purchased it's a 34 inch ultra wide uh it's going to be i'm literally going to be sitting in front of a video wall <laughs> essentially the way uh, because my computer desk uh is uh 38 inches wide and the monitor itself uh, be uh including the bevel is 36 inches wide so <laughs> yeah the monitor will be almost as wide as my computer desk and as tall as my cd tower that's on the back of my computer desk uh, so yeah, it's 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 pretty massive, but I like. And remember, I, anyone I like who signs up for Patreon that. soon, I don't know for how long until supplies last, will get one of my fabulous uh, X Transbox crank and stacks coins. I got twenty three of them. Please <laughs> sign up; I'll send them to you. And if you do the uh, if you do our highest tier, uh, you will get an autographed copy of Rick. You got one handy? No. No. But you'll get a autographed no. copy of Rick's latest book, uh, the or, or any book that I've written that you yeah. want. I, I don't yeah. care. Um, yeah, uh, I'll send it. I'll send it to your. I'll drive it to your house if you live within thirty minutes. Miles of me. <laughs> if, you, if you live within thirty minutes of Rick Alvarez, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll come to your house for a meal. I don't care. Yes, cook him. Cook him food. He likes food, and bring him beer. Preferably draft beer that is... That no is, IPAs. No IPAs? You don't like no, those? No IPAs. No, I don't like the IPA. <laughs> but yes, uh, check us out on our Patreon. Also follow us on Twitter, at TFYLP. That is always the easiest way to get a hold of me directly. Uh, if you want to uh, ask me questions or send me feedback, uh, you can always send it to me, at TFYLP. Uh, love hearing from our fans. Got, got a lot of great fans that... Uh, interact with us on there and if you go to ripped apparel at rippedapparel.com and you do any shopping at that uh, online store if they as long as they don't have a superseding deal in other words a better deal uh you can use the promo code tfylp pod all capital letters and you will save 10 percent on your order at ripped apparel so that's pretty awesome uh, and also, as always, check out CaptureProy.com. Great toys, great prices, great service, where you can save even more on orders of $150 or more with free domestic shipping. CaptureProy.com. Not introducing Stasis Pod. Don't don't know yet. It hasn't hasn't been officially announced. So, so you probably said something that shouldn't have been said. He told me yesterday it's up. Is it? He that's what he told me. That's news to me. Of course, he, he doesn't tell me a lot of things. I, I, I asked him earlier, I'm like, uh, so dude, are you getting Zeta uh, Swindle in? Which I, I can't remember what his name is. He doesn't even have pre-orders up for it yet, yet some stores are already getting them in. I'm like, 
what the hell? I want my swindle. I haven't even got brawl yet. When Swindle arrives, you can add him to your stasis pod, which is uh, capture praise, answer to order stacking, and pile yes. of loot, roller stash. You can keep your orders at capture praise warehouse until you're ready to ship and save on shipping that way. Yes. Stasis pod by capture prey. Yes. Which I, I think he should have went with captured uh, or captive prey. That would have probably Cap- been better. Captive prey would have been okay. It's but too, someone too really special to me came up with stasis pod. You? It was me. Wasn't, yeah. it, wasn't it me? Didn't I come up with Stasis Pod? No. You also said Stasis Pod, so we can share credit if you want. No. Whatever. I made it. I, I'm the yeah. bir- I'm I'm the birth of all good ideas. You shall all shut up. <sighs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on TFYP. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. It's pronounced Tiflip. Tiflip. <laughs>